transubstantiation. Divine wisdom has invented a way by which our Lord Jesus Christ dwells always in his church. In one sense, he has gone away from us, never to return till the day of judgment. He has ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of his Father. His great white throne is set up in the eternal kingdom and round it forevermore. The redeemed saints and elect angels are gathered. Of this, he says, the poor ye have with you always, but me ye have not always. We do not have him with us always in his natural appearance so as to be able to see him, but in another way he has not left us. Lo, I am with you all days until the end of the world. He is with us in the blessed sacrament, just as truly as he was in the world in the days of his pilgrimage. Though he hides himself, being withdrawn from our sight, yet he is always in the blessed sacrament, wherever it may be. There the same throne is set up in the same eternal kingdom, and round it are gathered the same angels and the same saints. This is a truth full of consolation and strength. Try to think what it is to have our Lord Jesus Christ always in the midst of us. Did God ever dwell in the midst of any people as he dwells in the midst of us? In return for this, we should do very little, even if we were able to bless and praise him every moment of our lives, even if we were always adoring him, always loving him on his altar, even if we were always lying on our faces before his tabernacle and his throne. Now the church, guided by the Holy Ghost, has given us a word to represent and guard this mystery. That word is transubstantiation, a very touchstone by which you can discern the faithful from unbelievers. Some persons out of the church profess to believe the real presence, but if you ask them whether they believe in transubstantiation, they will tell you they do not. And by this you are assured at once that they do not believe the truth. By this word you are able to try the spirits, if they be of God. Thus it is very important for those who are in the church to understand exactly and explicitly the doctrine of transubstantiation. 1. In the Blessed Sacrament, Christ is really present with his body, soul, and divinity. The bread which I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. This is my body. This is my blood. He is present exactly in the same way under the appearance of bread as under the appearance of wine. And wherever he may be, he is that self-same Christ who is reigning on his throne in heaven. There cannot be two Christs any more than there can be two gods. The Council of Trent says, If anyone shall deny that the body and blood, together with the soul and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ, that is, Christ whole and undivided, are contained truly, really, and substantially in the sacrament of the Most Holy Eucharist. Or on the other hand shall say that he is in it only by sign or figure or virtually. Let him be anathema. 2. In the Blessed Sacrament, Christ is in each species, and in every part of each species when that part is separated from the rest, as long as it retains the nature of bread or wine. And he is thus present in the Blessed Sacrament so long as the species of bread or wine remains. By the words of consecration, his body only is brought beneath the appearance of bread, and his blood only beneath the appearance of wine. But still, he himself, in both cases undivided and one, exists beneath the sacred accidents. And though he exists beneath them, he does not in any way touch them, nor do they in any way rest upon him. The reason why our Lord exists thus in the same way under the form of bread and under the form of wine is because, by the force of natural concomitance, all the parts of his body are inseparable. For now that he has risen from the dead, he dieth no more. His divinity also is in some special way under both species, because of that marvelous hypostatical or personal union by which his soul and body are united to the person of the Word. Thus, in all the perfection of his glorified sacred humanity, yet without weight and without extension, in a supernatural manner, above all laws of space, he is bodily in the Blessed Sacrament. 3. In the Holy Eucharist, there is a true transubstantiation or real conversion of the whole substance of the bread and wine into the body and blood of Christ. So perfect is this change that after consecration, nothing of the bread and wine remains except their species, or in other words, the sacred accidents. But you must understand, that nothing is changed which can be reached by our senses. The substance of the bread and wine is changed, but substance is beyond our senses. Indeed, we do not know what substance is. The accidents of the bread and wine retain all their properties, such as color, 
taste, weight, smell, or power of nutrition, and yet their substance is gone. And instead of that substance, there is the body of our Lord. This is a blessed and holy and life-giving mystery into which the angels desire to look, a miracle worked daily by the almighty power of God. And indeed, as St. Thomas teaches us, there are three great miracles in transubstantiation. The first miracle is that under the appearance of bread and wine, there is the true body of Christ. The second is that the whole substance of the bread and wine is changed into our Lord's body. And the third is that the sacred accidents remain unchanged, without their natural substance, and yet without resting in any way on the body of Christ. This is a most beautiful and graceful doctrine, fair and sweet as the garden of lilies. Behold, he standeth behind our wall, looking through the windows, looking through the lattices. My dove is in the clefts of the rock, in the hollow places of the wall. King Solomon hath made him a litter of the wood of Libanus. Let my beloved come into his garden and eat the fruit of his apple trees. In our gates are all fruits, the new and the old, my beloved. I have kept for thee, our Lord in all the glory of his sacred humanity, the one Christ, the one well-beloved Son of the Father, is hidden in the blessed sacrament. On the other hand, there are persons out of the church who imagine that his body is there on the altar, mingled in some way with the substance of bread, and his blood also mingled in some way with the substance of wine. And nothing can be imagined more gross and carnal and revolting than such a doctrine as that. In fact, they must in such a case believe in a dead Christ. This belief is dark and horrible and false, while the Catholic belief is bright and attractive and true. Jesus is on the altar really, truly, bodily, with his human body and his human soul, not in a natural, but in a supernatural way. Set, therefore, a great value on this most precious word, transubstantiation, for it teaches you clearly the true doctrine about the abiding presence of Jesus in his church. Wonderful and gracious, most holy and most blessed, is the adorable mystery of the altar. Jesus, our Savior, always dwells with us in the blessed sacrament and always is there, the King in his beauty.